my friend Mike is one of the most analytical, data-driven people I know. He makes every decision carefully based on facts. Except maybe one. 12 years ago, Mike bought a brand new Nissan Altima with a CVT. I have never, even with servicing, I've never seen one go over 180,000 miles. It just doesn't happen. It's not part of the equation when you get a CVT. If you get a CVT, expect to put transmission in it at some point in time. Nissan's been using them for well over 20 years, and I don't know why they keep using them, because they all fail. Well, here we are. Mike's Altima 2030 model with 184,928 miles on the original CVT. No service whatsoever, still running smooth. But there is a problem. Everyone says these transmissions die early. There's even a rattle coming from near the gearbox. And now the biggest question of all, do we change the CVT fluid at this super high mileage and risk shocking it into an early death? Or do we leave it alone and run it into the ground? Let's find out. Welcome to Professor's Garage. Today we are going to replace the CVT fluid on this 2013 Nissan Altima. This car is 12 years old, is currently at 185,000 miles, and the transmission for it, the CVT for it, has never been replaced. And so what we are going to do can be a little bit controversial, can be a little bit risky because replacing the fluid can actually cause some issues or reveal some problems in the transmission to cause it to slip or to ship hard. So what we are going to do today is to first take a look at the fluid condition. So we are going to take a small sample of the fluid first and then take a look at the fluid condition, feel it with your fingers to see if it's too warm to do this replacement. And I'm going to talk to my friend Mike to decide whether he still wants to do it. So let's get started. So for now, we raise the car from the front and we have chucks in the back of the rear wheels. And also we engage the parking brake to make sure that this car doesn't roll. Okay, very important to make sure it's safe before you get under the vehicle. Later, when we check the fluid level, we have to lower the car to the ground Make sure it's level. I'm also going to take off front driver's side wheel because the transmission is on the driver's side and it's easier to access from this direction. So I can take this off. Okay, let's take off this front driver's side wheel. Place the wheel under the car for additional support just in case. So we start the engine to circulate both the oil but also the transmission for it. And we are going to take a small sample after it has been circulating. Now we are under the car and this is the transmission drain plug. So we are going to just loosen it a little bit and we are going to take a small sample. Okay. Okay, I think it's loose. Yep. So what I'm going to do is to drain a little bit of fluid into this glass cup take a look and i'm going to talk to my friend mike about the condition and i will let him make a decision oh so we take out about half a cup even if we decide not to do it i think i'm going to at least set the level and add a little bit of uh, new fluid in it because there's a loss now let's take a look i spill some fluid on the ground just by looking at the fluid, actually, I don't feel any metal in it, which is great. 180,000 miles. Okay, we just took a very small fluid sample from the Nissan Altima, 12 year old, 185,000 miles. And we are going to take a look at the fluid sample and compare to new fluid. This is equivalent of the Nissan's CVT fluid. Type N3, equivalent to Type NS3 of Nissan, for Nissan CVT. This is new for it. It's green. It's fresh. It's beautiful. Very clear, as you can tell. This is new. This is old, right? Obviously, there is wear. To decide whether you want to change it, whether it's a good idea to change it, I think the ultimate question is, how much friction material or how much metal is inside? It's for sure cloudy, but if I dip 
my finger inside and try to feel. I just feel fluid, liquid, and I don't think there's any metal that I can tell. Like there's always some risk. I'm not going to say no risk at all, but I think the risk is going to be low. Okay, my friend Mike is a scientist, and this is what he recommends. So we are going to do some filtration test, and we are going to pour this liquid through the paper towel, and to see if anything gets stuck. Is it right? Okay, and let it go through, and we'll see what remains on the paper. Right? Another cup for the new fluid. And, uh, let's see. Oh. Yeah, Mike, can you tell? Is there any metal or no, not at all. material? Not at all. Yeah. It's just fluid. It's just liquid. So, and this is what goes through. Okay. And this is it's another one. Yeah. It's really unbelievable. One hundred eighty-five thousand miles, and this is the condition. I think we are good. Right. Yeah, I'm good. We're good. Okay. So we'll proceed. Looks like I got the authorization to proceed with CVT for a change. That's what we're going to do today. This is kind of a plug. In the old design, this is actually a dipstick for the transmission oil. But now it's a non-dipstick seal unit. So let's try this small pick. Oh, yes. Excellent. So the metal is like this like a latch. The plastic tab is inside. Get in between the plastic piece and the metal piece, but you do need something really tiny like this to pry it away and then I pull it up. Okay, so this is removed and we know we can feel the fluid. This is the dipstick tube and we can feel the fluid from here. You can feel the fluid from the overflow, but that requires an adapter. Uh, a little bit tricky, but it's doable. Just get an adapter from Amazon or Nissan. And that will work too. But if you can remove the cap, this is actually quite easy to do. Removed the 19 millimeter plug, the joint plug, and just let it join. Okay, so we need to remove this crush washer. Nissan's new crush washer. This is the same crush washer for both engine oil plug and the transmission plug. The exact same size. This side with the notch. It's a smaller surface. You put it on the plug. The other side goes up toward the transmission or your pan. And you do have to thread it on. Turn it clockwise to put it on. So once the fluid is completely joined, we're going to put this on, crush it. That is seal the unit. Okay, I think it's about all done here. It's only just a few trips. Put this transmission fluid plug back with the new crush washer. As you can see, we are going to tighten this tooth spec. We do not need this to set level. We are going to set level from a separate overflow plug. So we are going to torque this tooth spec and set level. We are going to tighten this. And the torque spec is 25 pound feet. <laughs> So tighten this to 25 pound feet of torque. Good. Okay, so this is the transmission pan. And this is the, the front. The driver's side, you see the brake rotor. Between transmission unit and the exhaust pipe, this is the external oil filter. This is the paper oil filter. Today, we are going to leave this filter alone. And we are going to do it, replace this filter 30,000 miles later, okay, in the next service. There is also a strainer inside. It's a screen. That internal filter or strainer does not really need service. You don't need to go through all the trouble to replace the internal strainer or filter. Okay, so we have tightened the joint plug, and I just wanted to make sure that we can remove the overflow plug before uh, we fill the fluid. Turn it counterclockwise to make sure I can remove it, and looks like it's loosened. 
this is officially where you should set the fluid level, but it's also where you fill the fluid. But you need an adapter because it goes upward and then pump fluid from this, which we are not going to do, okay? We are going to fill the fluid from the top. When we reach 104 Fahrenheit temperature, we remove this. When the fluid starts to trickle, that means the fluid level is correct. But now we know this can be loosened. We can proceed with filling up fluid. You can potentially use the fluid pump, but this funnel will work just fine. You can go in there. I will try to fill the fluid slowly so it doesn't overflow. Let's give it a try. There's no overflow. One bottle. It probably drains out maybe three and a half quarts. I'm going to put in four quarts. When we set the level, we probably join maybe out half a quart or so. I think we joined about over a little bit over three quarts. But we are going to put in four quarts. Circulate and let the fluid reach the temperature and then let it join from the overflow. Four quarts should be more than enough. Two quarts in. The third quart. The new fluid is so beautiful, so clear. This is engineered specifically for the NS3, for Nissan. So this is compatible. Okay, now the fourth bottle. We are all done from here. Four quarts in, and we are going to set the level. Okay, we put four quarts of CVT fluid into the tube, into the transmission. And now we are going to lower the car to level, make sure it's level when you set the fluid. This Nissan Altima has very low clearance, but I removed the front driver's side wheel. So we'll give it a try. We're going to lower the car to level. I'm going to test if I can reach the overflow plug. So let's lower the car. I think they are probably on the jack stand already. Yeah, I think it's level. Very good, but I need to make sure I can exit the plug. <laughs> Sure. Old food. Hopefully you can see how dark it is. But the good thing is it's all liquid, not burned. So even though it's dark, it's not a concern. Let's take a look. <laughs> Yeah, it's dark for sure. <laughs> so now we are ready to set the level. First thing is to plug in the OBD2 interface. There are lots of scanner options. I'm using a really high-end scanner, but you do not have to pay this like $500. I will show you a number of options, like a $100 or so scanner. They can do this job. And I will post the product uh, links in the description below so you can purchase them from there. Let's get started and let's start the car. And we are going to enter diagnosis and search. Um, I'm going to automatically search. And you have a number of controls and we need to get into the transmission control TCM. So let's get into the transmission control module data stream. Of course, on this scanner, reading that piece of temperature data is a piece of cake. So let's go to all signal and we are going to find the transmission. Yeah, fluid temperature is, is okay. Yeah, now, right now it's already 95. Put your foot on the brake because we don't want the car to move. Slowly shift. You know, drive neutral, reverse between these three. And I think the temperature will rise. Yeah, now it's 98. Okay, the temperature right now is 104. Take off the overflow plug. Let the fluid drain. 
So you see there's a stream of fluid coming out. We are going to let it drain until it trickles. When it trickles, we are going to put this plug back. I will show you the port number, but this is the rubber gasket for the overflow plug. I just put it on. Now we seal it. It's about to trickle. Right now it's almost trickling. And we can put this plug back. It is trickling. And we are going to torque it to spec. It says 25 pound feet of torque. Great. We are going to have a test drive. Hopefully there is no surprise. Okay, we are going to measure how much we take up from the overflow. Plus, this is from the one quart that we took up for comparison. We put in four quarts. Let's see, so this is like one third of a quart. Three and maybe uh, two thirds of a quart. So that's the amount of fluid we actually put in. I think it's more than we took out. I mean, the original fluid may be slightly lower. So it's a good thing that we go through this procedure to make sure we set the correct level. And so we are all done, but we're going to have a test drive to see how it goes. Hopefully everything is smooth. Eighty pounds of torque. Oh, no. We're all done, ready for the test drive. We can put this cap back on the dipstick tube. I think it should click, yes. It clicks, just push it in, clicks. All good. Let's go for a ride. Yep. So, what did we learn from Mike's Ultima 185,000 miles later? Why so many CVTs die early? Most fail from heat and abuse. The CVT chain and clutches aren't built for aggressive driving. Mike's smooth, low RPM habits are likely why his transmission is still alive. Nissan's official recommendation is to replace CVT fluid every 60,000 miles with multiple join and fuels per service. If you are maintaining from the start, follow that schedule. Our decision today is just one conservative join and fill. No flush to avoid shocking worn clutches and valve body passages. We will revisit in 10 to 30,000 miles and replace the external paper filter then. Now it's two weeks after the fluid change and Mike's Ultima is still shifting smoothly. Proof that with the right care and caution, some CVTs can live longer than people expect. So here is the bottom line. Drive gently, change the fluid on schedule, and don't panic if your Nissan CVT makes it past 100,000 miles. It can go further than you think. If this video helped you understand Nissan CVTs better, Give it a thumbs up and subscribe to Professor's Garage. Remember, if Professor can do it, you can do it. Until next time, may the Lord bless you and give you peace. Ping an.